Hey guys, so how's this for an interesting one? That could have been really bad here. It's a trailer that uh, had a pretty severe break in it. Uh, as you can tell, one of the loops at the bottom <clears throat> popped. And I couldn't imagine the sound it made when it did. Uh, so it's a good thing that they caught it. And it turns out it looks like they were having problems for quite a little while because some of that was already rusted over a little bit. You can tell it had been sitting there you know, for a little bit of time before the last bit finally let go so i'll be cutting it off here in the next uh, few seconds you see there where it's stretched out just a little bit barely hanging on and so uh here we go we're gonna be doing some gouging so hang tight So we got it off. You can see all around the perimeter there. It's more of a perimeter weld that held it all together. Not too much of a weld, not that big of a weld. So all that totaled up to quite a bit. And here you can see the separation line of the weld between the two parent metals. Real nice and clean. So that made it really easy uh, to follow all the way around, which was nice. And I got the uh, Tanya 200 <laughs> and I knocked it out of there. So it worked out well. You can see the perimeter welds around there. A couple feet of weld, but it wasn't that big a weld, maybe three eighths, half inch weld. So in order to access some of it, you can see the center there, I had to cut out some of the center plate section to get to the top side of the weld, but that wasn't a big deal either. I just put it back on there when you're, you're done and then glue it all back together. So uh, here I am torch cutting this section here. This is a Radiograph 10B, it's an old model. I don't actually know what year it is, but uh, it's a really nice tool. Here in the next photo, you'll see uh, the top edge of the parent metal, the plate itself. You should be able to see how the top edge of the plate stayed really square uh, to the plate itself. Sometimes you can accidentally set the preheat flames too hot round off the edge and that's just too too hot so this is real nice here in a second I'll show you uh, how the cut came out real nice and square 
nice speed, nice uh, heat settings, and it worked out great. Here's where I'm talking about the top edge, nice and square. Don't put the preheat flames too hot. You'll round off that edge. I've got another little pointer for you here in a second after this cut gets done. And it's mostly talking about the oxygen jet. The center jet needs to be really clean. And if you'll need to be able to see it at least past the thickness of the material, if that makes sense. When you depress the oxygen lever, you should see a clear jet where the oxygen is burning through or going through the center of the flame. And if you can see it past the thickness of the material that you're going to be cutting, you should have good success. There you go. I'm going to pause the video here and show you that what I'm talking about. Right there, if you look at that oxygen jet right in the center, you want it to be past the thickness of the material. So it'll, it'll take a lot of cleaning you know, with the tips, tip cleaners, but it works. Now this is part of a video that was in one of my older videos where I was piercing a two inch piece of plate. The reason I was able to pierce it so easily is because I had already made all these cuts to it, and so the plate material was really hot. Alright, so the next step here is to cut that center and being that the material is already really hot, it didn't take much to pierce through the center. I didn't get to videotape me cutting the center holes, or the center hole I should say, because it took me a little while to figure it out and how to get it set up, but it worked out well in the end. But basically what I was finding is that the hole for the pin wasn't actually just one diameter hole. The front half of the hole was a specific diameter, the size of the pins, and the back half of the hole was about a quarter inch bigger. So you'll see that in the next few pictures coming up in a second. There we go, there, a piece on the ground. I had already cut the holes. And so the front half, as I mentioned, was one diameter, the back half was a separate diameter. You can kind of tell there. I did have slight serrations in the, around the outer perimeter of that hole, so I built them up with some welding rod and made sure that they were nice and smooth. You don't want any type of nick or um, gouge to affect the strength of the material in the long run. So in a very similar way, around the perimeter of the piece I cut, I tried to make sure that I used a flap disc to remove any sharp edges 
or any nicks that could cause problems. That's a good sized chunk of metal. It's a two inch plate. I think it was AR400. I don't actually know. The, the material was provided by the customer. The front there looks like it's got some deep serrations, but they weren't, weren't deep at all. They were very shallow. So a little bit of cleaning with the grinding wheel, the grinding stone, make sure all the edges were smooth. It almost looks like a factory piece. And so now the trick is to put it back in there, take some measurements. Here, I put it on the bottom side of the trailer, or the, what was it, the neck or the trailer? Or the forklift to make sure that it fit. And you can kind of see the opening towards the bottom there. Now this is another pointer. If you're trying to find a bevel or an angle, you can't, make sure, can't see exactly. Stick the uh, tip cleaner in there and kind of get you pretty close. Now it turns out I was still wrong. My angle was a little bit off, but that's all right. We weld it up just fine. A little grinder work, kind of bevel, finish off the bevel, work out okay. Torched out pretty smooth except for the end there. I don't know if I hit something in the BB of something on the track or something, but it just nicked it a little bit, but it was fine. Now here's what I was mentioning. My angle was a little bit off. That's all right. It worked out all right anyway. It's a fit up along the front edge. There you go. Clean all that up and start gluing it all back together. To make sure that it all fit together, I cut discs that mimicked the locations of the pins at the bottom of the trailer and used a piece of angle iron so that I could ensure that the plate that I welded on, the plate that I welded on was going to be in the proper location. So I already had a measurement from the front edge to the front edge of the hole, so that came out right, but I needed to make sure that the spacing width part was right. So that's the way I figured to do it. It worked out well. It held together or I should say it, it held it at the right spot. Now there you can see what I meant about the one size diameter was bigger than the other. That's the way the opposite side was, so I just copied it. And then I just started welding it up. I like using uh, Hobart Fab Shield 21B. Works out all right, brought in the field. I know that there are other wires. I haven't tried those yet. This one works for me. Uh, rather short video because I didn't have any much welding uh, footage but I thought you guys could learn something from it there I am putting back the center piece back on there and uh, the plate that goes in the middle of the trailer right there and it's all glued all back together so quite a bit of work not so bad a little bit of gouging a little bit of welding the customer was super happy so that turned out well the weld did not go across the whole length of the front edge of that plate. It was only a two-pass weld. Uh, that one and this one. So I left it at that. And of course, all the weld perimeter that goes around the sides and underneath that held it in there pretty strong. So that worked out well, too. That was a pretty shiny weld. I could have probably done a little better on the, my end, my finish. But either way, I hope you guys learned something from it. And... Uh, Thank you for watching, and uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one, and I'll try and get back to regular videos later. See ya.